No, nothing's worse than Timmy with a Thoraton. Oh no, nothing's worse than Timmy with a Thoraton. Oh, he's actually coming out. Hello. We're coming to have a talk to you because we had a meeting with Keisha and that yesterday. Yeah, should we go under her? Yep. Um, the out. Okay. So it's just Good. Okay, after that meeting yesterday, yeah. we're left wondering where things are actually at because we've got a supervisor and a social worker assigned that going by yesterday's meeting have no clue. Right, to the case. They came with a the email Jess got was in regards to the fact that we would meet up. They needed time to read up on the file, understandable because it's a big file. But how can they come to a meeting not knowing what's going on? They, they really had no clue. Uh, and the, the bad part about it is this, okay. They kept trying to, I asked them several times this question. In danger, okay, as far as we're concerned. So, why okay, they, they wanted to keep bringing up care and protection concerns in regards to Jess and our whanau, right. but would not and they point blank refuse to address the fact that we we're asking what is OT doing to ensure the safety of children? because as far as we're aware of now there's no 24/7 watch. Okay, also we were forwarded by Carolina Filippo the fact that um, you have youth horizons involved. Okay, you have triple P parenting involved. And you have, no, I can it's the one through um, Kokiri. Yeah, so those three services are involved. The problem, the problem we've got with that is this. Triple P Parenting is only an online course. I called Youth Horizons, explained the situation to them, and as far as they are aware, they have nothing that could deal with a caregiver that is assaulting a child. And I said, I don't know whether you've been made aware of that situation or not, or what they've contracted you for, but that is what's happening with the child, okay? And the lady said, but we don't have anything that deals with that. So we've come here today to ask you to give us a straight answer. Where is everything at because of the fact that your staff couldn't give a straight answer? Yeah. So that adds to knowledge of the case, you're right. They haven't read through the whole file. They haven't been briefed about the file. About the situation. It's a bit so they're being friendly. So they're right in saying they do know aspects of the case, but not the whole details of the meeting. Okay, but that's. Well, no, not really, because um, Keisha stated to me, we, like we said, Jess came back and said, how about can we do a meeting Monday? The reason we couldn't do the meeting Monday, they needed to bring themselves up to speed mm -hmm. with where the case was at. Yet they came to the meeting, like, at the meeting, 
Keisha stated, no, this is just for a, a face-to-face meet. Okay, but that's not what your original email stated. We brought this up with you. Okay, and she turned and says, well, that's what was intended. Okay, well, when Jess came back to you and said, what about this day? You said, no, you couldn't do that because of that. Um, and then it became sort of apparent to us throughout the meeting why the delay was done, because um, I asked her about the notice of intention to appear, which for our, ca- our side of the case was due Wednesday. Well, we weren't going to put a notice of intention to appear until we had this meeting. I said, but you, knowing the court, you had to do it within seven days. So, in, in my view, try another way to try and delay the case, because that's what's been happening a lot. OT has been putting in to delay the case. Rebecca Dean keeps doing that. She tried to do that at the last court date, but was told no, it needed to be dealt with sooner. Not by us, but by, by the court. So, what we're worried about, we've now had it where, first of all, it's been hit six times. Okay? Everybody keeps saying allegations. Allegations is when there's been no proof of it. The caregiver, Sue, has admitted to them all. Okay, there's an admittance on police files to it. Okay, yet the police won't charge her based on the fact that OT are involved with the case. Now that you know, is wrong. Well, that's what we've been told. If they can't lay charges. Yes, by the constable that did it. Okay, now I will go as far as to say we found out there was no investigation the first time. Turns out he only made inquiries. I was trying to figure out how did you, t- how did you guys take 20 days and we went the, the day the case got handed to him, dealt within two hours. We questioned him on this because it's happened again. His answer was, I was never there to investigate it. I was asked by my supervisor to do an inquiry. Okay. So we've got, as far as we're concerned, we've got two agencies that are trying to cover up assault on a child because that is what has happened. You can put it any way you like, but New Zealand law says since 2007 you cannot smack a child. Okay. New Zealand law says under Crimes Act section 194, touch a child, okay? It's a very well-known fact, but as I put it to Casey and yesterday, now if this had been Jessica or any other parent and someone had called OT, they'd be uplifting the child because of it. And the, the way I look at it from, from my point of view of knowing your act and how you guys work, okay, that's what would happen. Okay, I've, I've known of other parents and I'm helping other parents where that's exactly what's happening. This thank you is our granddaughter, day by day, Sue has admitted in correspondence with others that um, she gets very frustrated with, with her at dinner time. Okay, and that's when the lashing out happens. I've been saying all along since well before this all started with the smacking that she was being smacked. Okay, Sue reminds me of my own mother. Okay, and so my opinion of it is. She can lie to you, to you guys, but she is disciplining that child daily and hitting it. That is my view, after 11 years of her going through it myself. You know, my granddaughter shouldn't have to go through that. You guys, like I said last time, have your section 4A, and you're not doing it. Her safety is paramount. Why are you guys leaving her in a, in a um, placement where a part has happened again? And yet, you guys are deeming her safe, putting her on online parenting programs. Okay? You, how is that helping you? Who sits there scared when you're... You know, I've always done this with my granddaughter, okay, when she lived with us. This mum. Okay? I did that to her two weeks away. She cowered away like I was going to hit her. Just to clarify, this pump is going like that. And she knows what it is. Thankfully, the other, uh, the other week when... Um, she came back, she realised she wasn't going to get hurt and she was quite happy. But you know, that tells me straight out something, something you know, somebody's using a closed fist. I'm worried about my granddaughter's safety. Yeah. yeah. I suppose there's a lot of the agreement that we can unpack in regards to our process and in child what I know somebody to investigate. We investigate together. So we liaise with them on the basis of the information that's provided to them. They then determine whether it needs to be an inquiry or investigation. Are you talking about the police? Yeah. Incorrect, because that's not what we've been told. So when there's, a, when there's an allegation, mm-hmm. 
You guys can deal with the investigation first. You do a child file. Yes, but they didn't get handed until after. We've, we've got the complete file communication between yeah. Kirk Fraser and Dawn Graham. So it wasn't handed until afterwards. Are we talking about the recent one or the last one? That's the one back in, in um, November. So we consult with them about mm. the information. Yeah, we consult with them. And on that information, they then agree to determine together whether there needs to be an investigation, the outcome of the investigation, whether there needs to be charges or not. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, if we're talking about the previous one, that discussion with the police, there wasn't enough information to proceed with the investigation to resolve the charges. So if there's not enough to go by charges, Okay. Your own act states that if there's two or more of the same incident, then it is to be investigated by police. So why is that not happening? Yeah. This one, there will be a process that we follow again, where we talk with the police and determine whether there needs to be an inquiry or special investigation. So why are we led to believe yesterday this investigation has been done and over with? In regards to... The, the latest thing. The police? No. You, it's Carolina Filippo has turned around and that's where we got the what, what has been put in place. Okay. So what was the outcome? Sorry. What's the outcome? This is the thing. Just that the investigation is over and done with. Okay, and the um, the print the support services that Sue will receive. Now this is the other part that's wrong. Okay. Yes, you can offer this offer the support. Okay. How is it going to help when it is up when it's left to Sue to decide what she wants? That's not going to help. That's not going to help. It's the idea of triple P going now. Not online. Triple P is only online. And supporting you. But triple P is only online. I've looked it up. Right. Okay. You can only do an online course. Am I different? Different in our views here because I'll confirm when the person will be going into the home online. Well, then we would like confirmation of that because the online itself. It states that they don't have anyone that goes face to face, okay. and it says pick the course you need to do, and that there's a was it eighty six or eighty nine dollar thirty fee. So there, that, that's what I'm saying. My understanding was they go into the home and they offer support to serve. You know, no, that, that's youth. It's youth horizons. Okay, but so youth, you youth horizons tell me that okay, um, if they had been. Because utilizers tell me you guys fund them for that, mm -hmm. okay, and that um, given the information I gave them, they would have been able to tell you they don't have support for you. And I said, she said, so is that what's actually happened? I said, my granddaughter has been assaulted again, okay. She, she, she said, and she asked me how many times. I said, six back in November, once again. Now back in November one, if you remember, if you look at your file, you guys have got it on there that, that Sue agrees she will never touch a child again. So, and that's in the safety plan. Is that child still there? I can answer that for you, and that is because there's nobody else that can do the NG tube except for her mother, and you'd have to retrain someone. But the problem we have with it is this. The original care and protection concerns, in reality, have been dealt with because um, even in the hospital, they couldn't feed her. They couldn't get her to gain the weight. Okay, so them saying that she didn't follow medical plans got proven wrong at that stage. Okay, the only other thing that was wrong was um, the misuse of nasogastric tube. We did agree with that. Yes, okay, maybe it shouldn't have been used, but then Professor Stringer told Emily while she was at the meeting, you should have left this family to, to it because they finally had that child gaining weight. She, but she wouldn't answer him. We're at the stage now where, okay, her own lawyer is just grabbing at straws because she's gone from trying to use two two paragraphs in a 178 report to because we were able to clarify those two paragraphs let's dig at the other and find another six okay now i don't know where you guys are trying to go with this okay but it becomes pretty over obvious to me that when save it and someone can't answer it or give a response to it you're not really going anywhere so we want to find out why is there no 24 7 watch in there when she's been assaulted seven times okay we, there was an email sent um, and that was what she had turned around and said oh, triple horizons i think it's not an outcome because of the fact the child's still in the danger three so, days ago there you go so i would assume that carolina in her investigation has been that 
So how do you deem a child? Mm. I'll go back to my question. We are now at seven times the hitting of the child. How do you deem a child to be safe in that placement in times? Tell me how your organisation does that. I'm not aware of the um, details that you... Last year in, in, in September, on the 28th, you guys got a report of concern from the community news. That stated one. Okay, you guys, Emily emailed stating that it was one time. We got the hospital files and discovered that no, it wasn't, and that Kath Grant had reported three times. Then got investigated, then when Kirk Fraser went to go and talk to Sue about it, she admitted to six times since birth. Okay, the bad thing about it, yes, it, the, yes, that's right. So that did answer a lot of questions for us in regards to her treatment at the context. Mm -hmm. But we've had it on file where, okay, Sue has stated six, uh, six times from birth to two years old, okay? The weird thing is she didn't have her at the age of two years old. Then she claims later on six times since she's had her in, her, had her in the care of her, okay? So if you add on the last time that's just happened on the 26th of February, She's hit that child in her, in her little three-year lifetime 13 times at her own admittance. And yet you guys are still deeming her to be safe in that placement. Does she have to die before you do something? All we're saying to you is, if you, okay, if you can't bring her back to her mother, you need to pl place her in a different placement. She's not safe there. It has been proven seven times at least. Yeah. I suppose our investigations are showing us but they're not. How do I know they're not? Because you've got admit. No, you're going on allegations, and they're not allegations because you have admittance from the key of it. So when someone admits to something, they're saying they're guilty of it. Okay. So if someone is guilty of assault on a child, that child should not be with them. Whether or not she's been charged, she has admitted I hit this child. Now I'm telling you straight. My view is this: if that was any other parent, and you had heard that. You'd be signing off to have that child uplifted. Aye. I believe that more, very truly, because this site did it on the fact of a medical condition. So I believe that very truly. Could you explain how it would on the community deem that my daughter is safe knowing all of this? Yeah. And how she safe? How would on the community How did you come to the decision as an organisation that that child mm -hmm. is safe? We look at the nature of the incident, we look at this food around, so we look at the attachment, we look at a whole lot of factors, not just in regards to the... So why do you look at the attachment in that, in that area, mm -hmm. okay, when yesterday Jessica was told that they, they had to do um, a 1782 in regards to the attachment in regards to her mother, okay, this is becoming on a, some levels, an uh, organisation bias. Because why is it that everything the paternal, paternal whanau has asked for over the whole time, including getting approved by you guys, which we found very hard to believe because you can't approve someone in two days. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're very worried about the fact that she's placed in a placement where she is being assaulted. And as I've explained to doctors, that does have an impact on the rest of your life and how you are and your eating and everything, like I tried to tell you last time. Okay, but for some reason, this site doesn't see that. That's what I don't understand. This site doesn't see that. I've spoken to. Assault. And I suppose, you know, assault is physical abuse, which is. But it's serious. Serious, you know. Punching, no, slapping, no. Assault, you know, assault. Okay, assault is as simple as touching someone. Okay, I, and I can say that to you because you know I've seen that happen in the past. Okay, I've also seen people be charged with assault, you know, being stupid, spitting on a cop. So it doesn't have to be of a physical nature. It's what you are wanting to deem it to be. Okay, deem it to be is not law. You, you, in my view, you don't get to, um, how do you put it? It's not your personal view on what it is, okay? What does the legislation state? The legislation states, if you go by legislation in the Crimes Act, that child's been assaulted, okay? If you go by section 194, it's assault on a child. And if you go by section 195, you knowing that it has happened, 
you're an accessory to that. So what, we, what I'm saying to you is, at the very minimum, needs to be removed from that placement to put somewhere where she's not being hit. Now, if that can't be done, there's no, no evidence to support anything else in regards to what you're so-called saying her mother has done. Okay, going by what Keisha and Yen said yesterday, okay, um, yeah, you guys, the first lot of concerns have been addressed. Okay, so as at today, what are you listing as the care and protection concerns? Not waiting for that. We want the answer today. We keep getting mucked around all the time. Well, actually, we're not sure of that because on the recording that both what both parties did, okay, at the beginning, Keisha tells us this Friday, okay, and then later on the recording, she says next Friday. So I don't even think your workers know what they're doing there, and we never agreed to that. This is what they again, as usual with OT, told us was happening. No agreement on it. We wanted to know the, what they were yesterday. Okay, if you've come up to speed on the case, you should have known before coming. Okay, and it's another way for OT to drag that sort of stuff out. And you didn't have an agreement from us, therefore, that's not an agreement. Okay. We're stating to you guys, we want to know now, and we have that right because we didn't make an agreement with them. Dean, stop mucking us around. You can go to your computer and you can tell us what the concerns are. In fact, I'm pretty sure you're probably well aware of what they are. Cards out on the table and tell us what they are instead of trying to muck us around every time. You've done this to me for well over a year. They're in the affidavits, they're in the court reports, they're in the reports. are in the latest application, I'm assuming it is an assumption it was just put in the court, wasn't it? No, you guys haven't filed. You've only done your, you've only done your notice of intention to appear. I'm quite happy to wait while you We're quite happy to wait while you do it. But I'm, no, no, what I'm saying is that... And I'm saying to you that was not an agreement. That was what your staff stated. We did not agree to that. We wanted to know yesterday what was going on because you guys, your employees... We're supposed to be coming down to let us know what was going on. As far as we're aware of, for you guys to get, your, get yourselves up to speed, which you didn't do on purpose, okay, mm -hmm. and s supposed to be, well, they say face-to-face -face meeting, but in the email it was to come down and discuss what was going on in regards to the case, which never happened. They just tried to fish for more evidence. That's what they did yesterday. Because you had none in the first place. That's why. So you I can sit there with a silly look on your I face, thought, but that's I what it is. Why would we want to meet with an organisation that has turned around and taken the child away on grounds that had been have become unfounded now? It's pretty obvious when a doctor is worried about the fact of what's going to happen if they got it wrong. But you guys seem to have the smug attitude that you can get away with it. That you can take a child, hold the child. You've actually, at the moment, got no reason to be holding the child. You're just doing it because of the fact that you can as an organisation because you have the government back, government backing and the courts backing. As I said to Keisha and Yen yesterday, the problem we have is we have OT and lawyer for child colluding. That's the problem we've got. Okay. The judges, as far as I'm aware, the court has already made it made it very aware, of, made us all very aware of the fact that, okay, the only reason that discharge can't happen is because they've got to wait for court date, which is why I said to you the last time you came in, stop dragging it out. You know, the child. How can you say you're putting the child's best interest first, okay, when you know your caregiver's assaulting him, okay, and you guys can't say you don't know it's happening because you do. Okay, and so right there, the fact that that child is being hit, okay, I, I just can't believe this organisation is called the Ministry for Vulnerable Children. She's being put through more harm and abuse with the paternal whanau, okay, at the moment, and the, yeah, the father knows what's going on, he lives in the household, okay, 
you guys allowed the father to live in the household when he was only supposed to have contact. And now look what's happening. That poor little girl, at a minimum, seven times assaulted in less than a year under your custody. You know, as I explained to Casey yesterday, and I gave, gave her a case note to read, Emily, August the 3rd, when she had to be rushed back into hospital and the caregiver would want, wanted to wait till she had woken up, that it was the most ill she's ever seen. The most ill, didn't say in anyone's care, the most ill she's ever seen. Okay, that child, when she got back to the hospital, was diagnosed as clinically dehydrated. A little bit longer and she could have died. Under your guys' custody. And you say, we've got to follow the... But you don't actually have to do that. You can turn around and make an application to the court for the child to go back to her mother that wasn't doing all of this. Mm-hmm. You know, and that it's been proven. She didn't not... She, like, as they're saying, she didn't follow my medical advice. She did, and it showed in the hospital when they couldn't get it to work either. You know? We admit, OK, the only thing... The nasogastric tube. But then when Professor Stringer said you should have kept going, that there concrete effect of it, he said to Emily, why didn't you just leave? He wanted her to go home with us that day. Professor Stringer is the second top paediatrician in New Zealand. He got bought in because Dr. Wilson wanted a Nissan fundification done. Okay, and when I informed him that child had been eating from November through to February, we had we started our oral. He decided, no, he's not going ahead with that procedure because, in his words, it's mainly done for children that are vomiting up and have never eaten orally. I said, no, she's definitely eaten orally. So he looked at Dr. Wilson and he said, um, Ross, I just got told this child has eaten orally. He goes, yeah, you never told me that. I wouldn't, wouldn't have even been looking at doing this operation. So, you know... As far as we are concerned as a whanau, the two reasons that were given by Dr. Andre, okay, which is the main reasons for the uplift, okay, dating that. So what are your reasons for trying to hold on to her? Because you don't actually have a valid reason there as far as I can see. Mm-hmm. You're going off the fact of trying to clutch at straws. Yep. Well, I can't answer that for you today, but never can answer So that. does that mean we have to go to Cassie about it again? Mm-hmm. You know, we've said, we'll put it in writing. I don't care what you've said. didn't have an agreement. Have for you, you have an office right there that you can go to and get the answers from. We're happy There's to wait. Files. Files. Oh, look, you don't need to look through files and files and files to come up with a care and protection so concern. Really passionate about this, ben. I totally accept that and understand that. And I know you want the best for you. I think that. I'm going to put this straight to you. Do you get it up? Is that what it is? Because that's all I see you trying to do at the moment, and it's not going to work. You're nothing but racist. Exactly. You're being very racist about this. In what way? In what way? In what way am I being okay, racist? Okay, so you're allowing... Well, you're saying your organisation is being racist. Yourself, yourself and your organisation are being racist about this, okay? Please you tell me how I'm being racist. Remove the child from the abusive situation with the no, paternal whanau. Right. How am I being racist? We asked our question first. And I said, it's part of the community. No. So how am I being racist? I'm not going to answer your question. You can't even give us the answer to the questions that we're quite entitled to ask. It's not hard for you to give an answer to what those care and protection concerns are now. Or, like or so is it because of that or is it because of the fact that you actually... So, I look at it from this point of view, Dean, okay, all you guys are trying to do is withhold the information, okay? Is it because you're trying to find care and protection concerns? Because we've already managed to justify the first ones? Is that the reason? Feel about it, okay. On the other side of it, we have the paternal whanau that is part here, okay? And on that side of it, everything has tried to be done for the paternal whanau, okay, by this organisation, okay? Every time, even when I've okay, even when I've tried to contact you, okay, you end up either ending a phone call, you tell other people that you've tried that you've tried correspondence with me. It's actually the opposite way around. I have tried correspondence with you, waiting for months on end to have correspondence. 
realise that other, other people from other avenues and branches and places that we talk to are coming to speak to you about this kind of stuff or getting involved, okay, that's when you decide to turn around and, okay, I'd better do something because it's getting higher up now, okay? So the fact is, um, as Ricky, who has emailed and sent you the form, we no, we're not even going to go there, Dean, because of the fact that, as Ricky has stated to Cassie, okay, that sort of understanding of it, he is very worried about the site as well, because you are not dealing with it from the side that it should be dealt with. Okay, he has he, he has cc'd me on the on, on the email, and he has put forward to her what he thinks should be happening. Okay, and you know, basically the fact that um, you know, you're running a site. And as far as, he's, as far as he's concerned, I don't know much about the Maori site, I admit that. But as far as he's concerned, you've got no idea, okay, and um, so there's problems there, okay. So we're just waiting on a response back from that because the reason we've had to go this way, Dean, is because you yourself stopped all communications getting past your national call centre. And I know it's you that's done it because I've been informed it's you that's done it, okay. Now, as I've asked at higher levels, how can we even get anything done when the site manager, I get a hold of Granny Moss's office when she was still in, I think she was still in, but when she was last year, mm -hmm. and you have made it so that nothing can go through those offices higher. That's what I've been told. You are, you are the one who's had it noted on the National Call Centre that if my daughter or myself call in, it is to be referred back to Lower Hutt site manager Dean Weedley. Dean, are you trying to tell me that the National Call Centre is lying? Green That's come from the National Call Centre. Okay, I rung again to be able to make a complaint. Nope. The National Call Centre, okay, on the 0508 number, as well as getting put through to Granny Moss's office, who says the, the lady there said to me, I have to refer you back to the site manager, Dean Wheatley. I was like, why is that? Because that's what he's requested on the national system. So... And then just so okay with Cassie talking to Ricky around... What I've received is he is joining our support team. He is not advocating on behalf of me and my partner. He is joining our support team. Yes. So you still will have to go through us that he is a part of my support team and my partner's support team. So when Cassie talks to Ricky, he's got to involve you? Yes. Me and my son, he's joined to speak The fact that you put in your in the email that he was advocating on our father's behalf, okay, that is why he got a hold of your regional manager, okay, because as he said, you know, when it comes to advocating, it does not mean you take the Fano out of it. And I, I I told him what you had stated in the email, and that is why he addressed the issue with your regional manager. Because you in his view and in our view, you were trying to remove her supporting Farno out of the situation because of the of the statement you made where it says about him, him advocating on behalf. That wasn't the well, that's what you've done, and that's why it's gone higher. Yeah, that wasn't the intent. So that's fine. I do have to get into this whole. So when are we going to get an answer? And I'm not accepting next Friday. Yeah. Because we never may have that agreement. The fact that your staff think that they can say we've got an agreement, that's not how it happens. I'll, I'll re withdraw the, the agreement to say that that's what... I'll say, I'll, I'll say this to you. It's Friday now. Yep. We want an answer by Monday. Okay. Also, how can you guarantee, also, how can you guarantee me that my daughter is safe in the environment she is in? How can you guarantee that? Because you're obviously not so wanting to move it. Safe. No, you can't. No, you, no, you can't. can't. How can you guarantee me that? Should we finish up here? I'd like that in writing. How you, how you yourself... What you guidelines are you putting in place? Uh, what are you actually putting in place to guarantee your safe? Again, in it's not, again, there's never been a, a first time. So we want to know how are you seeming that she's safe. Is that what you see here today? Yeah. Look, I apologise. How much will you question? You haven't answered anything. Got to get into this. Is there anybody in this site that is able to actually give a straight answer? Because you're the site manager as far as I'm aware of, and if the site manager can't do it, how can anyone below you do that? How can they give a straight answer? You can't give one. Okay, so obviously your who is more important than a child that needs safety.
answers. We're going to expect an answer from you by Monday, then. Okay. No, we're not. We're not saying to you. Yet. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. Okay. Cool. And I will be passing that on to your on to your regional not manager. Not cold. Stop avoiding what you need to do. Thank you.